to my mind right away who were previously great, great poker players or bridge players. In fact, one of the first people to write uh, a book on the similarities between gambling and trading was Edward Thorpe, who wrote Beat the Dealer, who then went on later to write Beat the Markets. And he discussed the similarities between the casino and the trading floor and determined that they were almost one and the same. And as further proof, in 1994, the Nobel Prize in economics was awarded to three e economists who found that the similarities between gambling and trading were so great that the theories could be used to help you become a very successful trader. Okay, let's go on and talk about how can we actually trade like a bookie. How can we trade like a bookie? What does a bookie do? A bookie simply determines the odds on a fight and then collects money from each side. For example, let's say there's two fighters, fighter A and fighter B. And let's say they're relative, to make it easy, let's say they're relatively um, equal in ability and there's no, uh, there's no big difference, so the odds aren't skewed in either side. Okay, the, what the bookie does is, let's say a million dollars is bet, he's gonna want to balance his book. So there's $500,000 bet on fighter A, and $500,000 bet on fighter B. Now just the, how he does that generally, because it usually isn't exactly even, he will lay off the difference with another bookie who does the same one down the line. So each bookie, if they're doing it exactly right, try to make certain that there's an equal amount bet on each fighter. Okay. Then what they do is they give you six to five odds on each fighter. In other words, for every six dollars you bet, you will win five dollars in return. So to them, it doesn't matter who wins. They're taking their, their approximately 10% out of the middle. If fighter A wins, they make their 10% of the money bet. And if fighter B wins, they make the same thing. That's exactly what we want to do when we trade like a bookie. Now let's look at the first chart and I'm gonna just give you an example. We're gonna get into the specifics of how we do this a little later in our seminar. but. Here's how we do it when we trade like a bookie. What we do, this chart is a chart of market action, and we, we pick the bond market. That's a, one of our favorite markets for trading like a bookie because it's more stable than any other market, and it's not prone to make big moves. So this chart, again, is the chart of bonds um, over four months during the summer of 1995. Now, what were we predicting what happened in the bond market during the summer of 1995? We had no prediction at all. We had no idea which way bonds were gonna go. All we were doing in the bond market in the summer of 1995 were selling options way out of the money on both sides of the market. We would sell put options that were below the market, and we would sell these put options to other traders who felt they thought they knew which way the bonds were moving. They thought they knew bonds were moving lower. So we would sell them put options. They made their bet, we took their bet. The same way, we did the same thing to people that thought the market was moving higher. We sold call, call options above the market. So what we, all we did, very simply, was stay balanced and sell puts below the market and calls above the market. Now the nice thing about that is you can have advantages that a bookie doesn't even have when you sell these options. First of all, every day, these options decay in their time value. Now, we're gonna, again, we're gonna talk about this in more detail, but just wanna give you an overview. The options that we sell have no real value. Their only value is if the market makes a big move that maybe they'll have some value, maybe they'll have some real value, but all they have right now is time value. And that is a chance that maybe someday in the future they'll be valuable. But what happens each day to time value, just like our lives? They waste away, they waste away. However, better than what happens to us when we grow old, we actually profit every day while the market chops around and stays in its trading range. Another thing that works in our favor is that both options decay in time value, not just one, both. And we're gonna look at, again, we're gonna look at some examples of this. But people who buy options are severely disadvantaged because for that option to actually make the money, 
the market doesn't just have to move in their favor, it has to make a big move in their favor to overcome that time value decay. And I've likened it to, in the past, is swimming upstream in a river. Now you're, you're swimming and you think you're making progress and you might make a little progress, but the force of that water keeps pushing you back. And it's the same thing when you buy options. The force of time value decay keeps making your option that you've purchased worth less and less. And the market really has to make a big move for you to benefit. Now instead of doing that, why not do it the easy way? Flow with the river and use that time value decay. But the other principle we're doing is we're not guessing which way that river's flowing. We're selling options on both sides of the market. So both options decay in time value every day. Okay? Now a market like we've seen in the summer of 1995 is the perfect market for this type of, of trade because both sides are going to be decaying quite a bit with very little action occurring every day. But this time value decay will even protect you if the markets begin to trend in one way or another. And again, we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about this uh, a little further in the seminar. Okay, 60% of the time or more, options, uh, the markets will have no trend. 60% of the time.